Okay, we've ridden this thing. Now we take it apart. Okay, folks, last video about this scooter, I promise. So when I first started researching and looking into getting one, right away I noticed the price discrepancy, and it literally ranges from around $200 to $2,000. So I was wondering, what is inside of these? Is there different components that could be explaining the difference between uh, the prices that we're seeing? And I had seen some tidbits in different articles about possibly different sized batteries or different wattage motors, and I was wondering what was in mine, and just in general, how these things work. So I started, of course, looking looking for like a parts list or a components diagram or even a disassembly video and I really couldn't find too much out there so uh, I decided the best way to find out is to dive into mine and that's what I'm gonna do okay I think I'm set up here I decided to do this in my office because uh, it's summer in San Diego here so it's just blazing hot down in the garage where normally I would work on stuff if I'm working on arcade games or anything for the house it's usually down there it's on the other side of my garage the other wall that's not the wall that's covered with arcade games I've got my tools and a bench and everything else so um, and by the way if you like collecting arcade games or you're interested in it 80s arcade games that you stick a quarter in and play Pac-Man Donkey Kong all that that's my other my real hobby and the real dedication of my YouTube channel not this other random stuff so if you are interested you can always check out my website 720zone.com. It's dedicated to my favorite game, 720, but it's also um, got a lot of general arcade collecting links and resources on there, and uh, it's a pretty cool hobby. So, okay, shameless plug out of the way. Um, let's get started. This thing is um, held together by 18 screws around the edge. Let's get those out first. Okay, these screws are sunk down in this plastic um, housing here quite a bit, and my power driver is has like a wider bit than I'd like, so I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way. So, interesting thing, I've pulled out four screws so far, two, three, four, and they've all been different. Okay, I think we have all of those off, let's see what's in here. So power to the little LEDs that are on the front here, connected right there to it looks like a little control PCB in there. I'll just carefully unclip that. And so there's the battery. Um, that's obviously something I want to get at and see if I can read anything on there because that's one of the pieces that you see a lot of different um, like specs for even like contradicting specs within the same manual or different um, maybe size batteries for the different many models of these things that are out there so I want to get that out too let's look in, under the other side of this thing all right a couple more things connected here some like glue in there or something but obviously the on off switch here with yellow wires and the charge port here and actually it looks like the charge port goes through the center obviously over to the battery so we'll disconnect all of that stuff next so here's where the charging wire connects right here that's it that's the charging wire on the other side going through the center and over to that switch there disconnect that next Next little piece there. Okay, what do we got here? So I'm going to start on this side because it looks more interesting. So there are two separate control boards, obviously, not just one like I thought there might be, um, which probably either have on them or control maybe the gyros to control speed and then everything else on there. I don't recognize too many of these components because I'm not that tech savvy, but um, they're connected, it uh, looks like, to the motor. <clears throat> by these colored wires here. I'm going to disconnect those first. So it looks like 
Yeah, that goes right into the ba the battery, so that's the power there. So I'll be kind of careful taking that apart. It says charged up. I don't want to see like a spark or anything, but I don't think I will. <clears throat> Looks good. All right, let's get this battery out next. Battery cover, four screws, I'll just leave them in there. Put that off to the side. Got a couple wires going over the top, which go into the center. So I'm gonna pull those off first, just to get them out of the way of the battery. And just so I can tell, it goes kind of like the inside one over to the inside one here, and the outside to the outside. I guess they're sort of keyed by the colors of the wires too, so yeah, I should be able to figure that out. So obviously taking this stuff apart, part of the reason to do it on video is to be able to put it back together, which is going to be the whole test, isn't it? It's going to be interesting putting this thing together for the first time and seeing if it actually works. This one comes through easy, but the other one kind of seems clamped together here. For her. I don't know why. Yeah, and look at that, they did the same thing on this side. So it's yellow to yellow, blue to green, and green to blue. I don't know why that is. So it looks like this board is free now. Got this free now. Doesn't look like anything's connected underneath. So there you go. Some capacitors, a heat sink on the bottom, and a whole bunch of little components that someone smarter than me could figure out. I don't see anything. It says 2015 525, so it looks like it was made relatively recently. And then that's it. So, okay, that's the my right side board. See that here. So I can see that some of these screws went down into this plastic casing here. Let's get that off next. It's got like in this case that's obviously over the motor area. These round circular things here are like this is like rubber here and it's you can even pull on it a little bit. Three screws. I don't know if it's like I don't know for dampening this somehow or you know something there. I'm going to dive in there and see what's in there. Set this up so I'm not losing these screws. So this is good. Cool. Here. I don't know if this battery is maybe just taped on here. I don't think there's anything else underneath. Alright, let's work on the wheel next. I'll worry about the battery in a second. So the wheel's held on by huge, four huge Allen screws. Those suckers are all on there pretty tight. Four Allen screws holding basically the, the wheel on there. So that's just a little cover that comes off like that. Interesting. And the wheel. So is the motor like inside there? What is making this? You know what that makes me want to do. disappointing, isn't it? <laughs> Take 
those screws out, but nothing comes out of here. I thought this would instantly be loose. Okay, I'm going to pull these off here, which are obviously some sort of the control for the actual running of the scooter, where when you press on the pad on the other side, which would be the top, it pushes these two things. So let's see what's in here. Just a stopper. It's all like rubber with like a little rubber pad that comes up actually on it that you can kind of see there. <clears throat> so then when you push that pad, it pushes this little thing up and what it's doing is just moving that up slightly, pushing up on this rubber pad, the other one is here, moving that up and when that goes up it's basically going into the board which is resting on top of it here like this and these this black dot here black round circle is the sensor at least on one side well I don't see that same thing on top so that's actually something else but this is like the reader here these two black um, kind of things sticking up there are basically like I guess an optic sensor type thing and when the pad is pushed, it pushes up on this little rubber gasket, goes in between those two things, and it kind of like breaks the optic reading between them and lets the thing know that the button has been pushed. So um, pretty interesting. And then once you dive in, it almost seems kind of like low tech. But anyway, that goes right in there in between those two things. So set that back down. And it's going to be the same thing on the other side. Interesting that the weight distribution, that it's not off. When you pick this thing up in the center, it seems exactly perfectly distributed. Um, the wheel is super heavy, obviously, because that's where the motor would be. Um, but then the battery is also pretty heavy. It's actually not super heavy. It's lithium batteries have a lot of capacity, and they're not real heavy. But it's got some weight to it, and then there's no battery on this other side. So somehow they've compensated by adding this little bit of weight to this side somewhere maybe the heat sinks bigger I don't know so do I want to go any further and dive in and see more of the the pad underneath I guess I could why not let's keep going and yeah I was wondering why this didn't pass through obviously it doesn't pass through because it goes to the um, LEDs on there, so the LEDs on the top, the battery indicator, and the, I guess communication indicator. So, okay, that pulls that top off, and now that wire will come out and go through this little hole. Hopefully, we didn't put that connector on. Yeah, boy, and it's like they, yeah, that just fit through there, and it's like they actually machined this. It's slightly a bit bigger so this little Molex connector could fit through there. It's funny. So that's the other one. So this one goes to one of the LEDs. And you can kind of see that here. And there's the pad. With just the two little switches that they actually, their calibration was sticking a couple little pieces of tape on there to make sure that those actually, when you push this pad, it pushes up enough to break that optic sensor. And then there is the light that goes to, I can't tell which one that is. I can't remember. It looks like it's the battery sensor that goes through there so and that's pretty much all this is it's this piece of piece of plastic and the other side would be the same in this pad and if I wanted to take this ring off I could separate this side here and this is just some sort of cheap cast aluminum or other light metal I don't know some composite or something I'm not smart enough to be able to say what that is So I'm not going to dive into the other side, but then there's the other side of that the metal piece there. turns independently. I'm not going to go through the other side of this because it's obviously going to be pretty much exactly the same. 
And I'm not going to take this off because it'd be the same as the other one. I'm curious about this wheel. I got to find out more about what's going on with this thing, what's going on inside of it, um, because it's so odd that you cannot get into here at all. I mean, there's no other screws. This isn't turn or anything. This is like solid on here. And as you saw, I was trying to even like pry it off with a screwdriver and you really just, you can kind of get in there, but not really. So let me just see here. I just heard a pop. Maybe that's good. Maybe it's not. So that didn't turn easy before, and now it does. I'm not too worried about getting that back together, because obviously it screws together with these six screws. But uh, you would think, is it coming apart? Maybe it is. No, I don't see much progress there. Okay, so I decided to just go for it and see if I could get this tire off here and I worked two screwdrivers in there and you can kind of see that there's some space now. I'm going to try to just pry the whole tire off, hopefully without destroying it. We'll see. So I just put this thing on the floor a little bit so I could really get a screwdriver like under it and I pulled that tire up so that I could just see what was in there. It's really nothing. It's just like the outside of the metal but I'd love to get it all the way off just so I could see how you get into this thing some more. So I'm going to keep working on it. Got the start of it there. Can't quite pry it all the way off though yet. Seems like if you ever got this thing off you'd never get the wheel back on but I'm going for it. All right, so I've pried on this thing enough to know, number one, that I probably couldn't get this wheel off without destroying it. I've actually had a screwdriver all the way under it, pried it to the side, but I could just not get it off. But what I could see under there, as I just showed before, was the, that there's not much to this. There's just It's just a sealed metal case with one kind of sliding um, cover on it that I can't quite get off. But I did pry this up enough, as you can see from my pry marks, to be able to see inside and I could actually see the the copper electrical wire of basically the electric motor that's inside here spinning um, on this thing against this shaft that's actually held in place inside the base. So um, I know that if I pried it off more I would for certain probably break it. I'm guessing it's possible I already have. This might be like, I don't know, like a hermetically sealed electric motor that's just once it's put together it's meant to stay together but my whole purpose in taking it apart was to try to see if initially if I would see a self-contained little electric motor that you'd hold in your hand I could read some of the specs on it but I just don't think that's going to be the case and I'm guessing if I went any further in here I'd see just the spools of electric wire and it would be ruined and I wouldn't see any type of specs or be able to get anything more from it that's my best guess so I'm going to put this back together and see if I've actually destroyed it or not. So that's next. Here we go. So of course when I got this thing all back together and tried it out the first time, one side worked perfectly, the other side the light came on, everything was 
seemed like it was going to work. It synced up for a second and then one motor would just kind of bounce. It wouldn't go and it was this side I worked on. I worked on the motor a lot and kind of pried into this, but long story short, something dumb. When I was putting this back together, this was across where one of the screw holes was for the base and I just screwed right through it and snapped it. So I think that's going to be my problem. So I'm going to fix this wire and fix up this blue one and see if it fixes the problem. Okay, so after splicing together the two wires that I accidentally screwed through and putting the whole thing back together, we have needs to be charged up, but we have success. So it still works. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed seeing the inside of the scooter. Thanks for watching.